So let's take a look at it. We have a, a really simple schedule. We have two tasks that are not dependent. They are not sequential. No relationships between them. The diamonds mean the zero duration milestones. Project start and project finish. So we have one task that is five days that can start at the project start. And we have another task that is 10 days that can start at the project start also. So the question is, how long is this project? And obviously, it is 10 days. We have two paths through our schedule, through our network of tasks. One is five days, the other one is 10 days. Well, the 10 days path is the critical path. So the critical path is basically the longest path through the schedule. Now, why is it important? Well, it is important because the longest path actually determines the shortest time that it will take us to complete the project. It is the shortest duration of the project. If you look at our project here, 10 days as scheduled right now is the shortest duration. If we need to, we can finish later. We can finish after 11 days or 15 days or 20 days, but we cannot finish earlier as scheduled right now. Now, what it means, let's say somebody who is working on the task that is blue task here, five days, says they're not going to be done on time. We realize that we have this extra time that they can spend without impacting the schedule. Our project will finish in 10 days, even if the five-day task slips for five days, is delayed for five days. It can start later, five days later, and finish in five days, and we are still going to be okay. Or it can simply be uh, extended for five days, no more than five days, and we are still going to be okay with our schedule. It will still be 10 days. That additional time has two names, float or slack. Float, because think about it, you can literally float this five-day task back and forth. You can start later, five days later, finish in five days, and you can start at the beginning of the project. It will have no impact on our schedule, on our project duration. However, if they go beyond that, then they will become, you know, that task, five-day task, becoming longer than 10 days, will become critical path. So, float or slack? I guess slack because we can slack off for five more days on the blue task. And there's no slack on the 10-day task. So, the critical path is the longest path, the shortest duration of the project, and it is also the path with the zero float or smallest float or slack, least float or zero float. So, it is really easy to understand. It is just a duration-based, sequencing-based method to prioritize activities or tasks. And it is purely based on duration. And we are taking into account our schedule. We always tell ourselves, as scheduled right now, because definitely we can put more people on the 10-day task and probably finish it in seven days, then, yes, of course, then the critical path may be the same, may be different. But we are talking about the schedule as it stands at this moment in time. And that's why it is a moving target. If, if your schedule changes, your critical path might shift, and it shifts all the time. So let's see how we work with critical path in Microsoft Project.